So, <coughs> hi everybody. My name is Arcangelo D'Alessandro. I'm an architect and designer, and I'm using Blender since uh, 2003, not just for making visualization or to visualize my project, rather to turn them into real objects. Uh, we are going to talk today about a project that's wh which name is Design by Food. What is Design by Food? Is a, uh, a design project that aims to, or let's say, that takes inspiration from um, the food tradition. And uh, it began in uh, 2012, but the, is, its roots are a little bit older, because when I was a young boy, I was used to watch my grandmother making uh, noodles. And she was cooking every day like uh, there would be no future. And <laughs> she, was making, she was making a lot of noodles and whatever. It was like a, like a machine. And I was just watching her hands and what uh, the each, each piece uh, of noodle or, uh, that she was making. And I was, as a young boy, just imagining and scaling the objects and uh, thinking if, uh, how it would be to live inside a, a macaroni or maybe like a sleeping in a orecchietta and so on. And this, this was just remaining in my head. And in 2012, uh, playing around with Blender, I started uh, making some, some design objects. So um, the inspiration can start from maybe a color or, <coughs> or the shape or just the texture, but all the way, I would say, can come from every uh, sparkle that you see in, uh, in, uh, in the food tradition. Uh, till now, I made a lot of objects, uh, but we are going to talk today about only two, two that are, to me, more representative. <coughs> Object number one um, is inspired by La Scorzetta, is a sweet uh, from south of Italy. And um, the inspiring factor was mainly the shape, the shape and the colors of this object. So as usual, I started to think about um, the, the main shape, just sketching around and thinking, OK, what I want to do? I would like to make a, a lamp, a desk lamp, not a technical one, uh, rather like, like, a, like um, ambient light for the for the living spaces. So those are the sketches. And since I didn't know about um, the shape, the weights, uh, I, I would like, I, at that time, I wanted uh, to, to keep an open process, a sort of parametrical way of thinking. So <coughs> I made the first rendering. And after that, <coughs> I started, hmm? oh, OK. I started modeling it. This is a, a quiet, classical approach to the design. That means I have a, in my head a shape, a, an idea of a shape, and I try to, um, to control it all the, way, all the way. So I just needed a low poly geometry with maybe a subdivision surface modifier. And after that, I put some uh, booleans just to, to locate the, um, the lighting fixture as well as a, as a weight to balance the shape and a curve modifier <coughs> just to master the final geometry. Uh, till now, that's, that's fine. I was happy with it, but I had to think about, uh, I had to think in the backwards. That means I had to think about what I have to give to the people that are going to uh, produce this lamp. Um, and it's, it was quite easy. I had to give them a 2D shape. Uh, how could I um, send it that, or uh, deliver to the, to the production? It was quite easy. I made a picture, a background image, and I was uh, using the UV layout editor just to export the UV layout as a SVG file and turn it into a CAD shape, uh, ready to be used in a laser cut or um, CNC machine, whatever. Uh, there's a, still a step. Uh, that means uh, the, the production needed a shape to curve the geometry. I already had um, the most geometry uh, in my file, so I just had to, to produce those two pieces just to give the shape to the, to the metal sheet. 
And as you see, this is the final result. It's a, a very, I love it. Uh, I have a many in my, in my apartment. And this uh, handcrafted at the end, it's uh, hand suit. <coughs> and you can use it for, for many purposes like ambient light or just a place where you put your mobile phone or your jewelry, whatever. Let's jump to the second object. <coughs> the second object, uh, I love it. It has a very nice taste and is a cacio cavallo, is a, is a, a food that is present in, uh, in Italy from south to north of Italy in many different kinds of variation. This object is very important to me because um, um, it has a, a funny and sensual shape and I love the texture outside. So I wanted to make again a, a desk lamp, but this time I would like to, I wanted to uh, to make a little bit more than, or just go further or, or beyond the, the, the standard design project, uh, process. So I made a couple of sketches, and after that, <coughs> I modeled the first um, exemplar. And since I got my first 3D printer, that was a, the wrong decision because my living room looks like, like a <laughs> uh, industry. Um, I made it, but I was happy, but not really, because, uh, you know, it's like you make a shape, it's dead, and it's going to stay always the same. And uh, with the 3D um, fabrication processes, actually, you don't need the industrial st standard, so you can think in another way. Basically, I wanted to turn this shape into this to the right. I, um, let's say having a sort of variation that uh, keeps the main geometry, but is changing without controlling it too much. So, back. Uh, how, cou how could I uh, achieve this, uh, this uh, target, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, task? I was thinking about what I can use in Blender. So, weight paints, uh, displace modifier, subdivision surface, uh, decimate modifier, and so on. At that time, the geometry node was not there, not yet. <laughs> so, <coughs> first of all, I needed to um, remake my basic geometry, a low poly, but in a different way, a subdivision modifier, and then a weight paint just to focus the areas where I, 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 I put at the end my displace modifier in order to give a texture outside the, the, on, the, on the outer skin of the object. Now, the problem is how I can uh, variate this object, how can I change the shape? <coughs> It was quasi quite easy. Uh, here to the right, you see my uh, modifier stack. <coughs> it's quite easy. I have uh, three levels of subdivision surface, but the very important part is the bend on the Y and the, on the X axis. At, at the end, as you can see, we have the solidify modifier um, before the displace modifier. So. I just animated with just one keyframe the bend on the X and the, on the Y axis, and uh, I did the same on, the, on a shape key modifier, just to influence the scale of the mesh in edit mode and not outside, <coughs> just to get something like this. And you can see here the, in the node graph editor, uh, I I could reach something like that, you know, like a sort of variation in a certain range. So, <coughs> now the problem is how can I deliver this to the 3D printer? It was quite easy. I exported the animation as an OBJ file, so I get for every frame a single object, already uh, uh, ready to be, to be 3D printed and assembled at the end. Now, since I got to, um, to be addicted to this object, <laughs> I said, okay, what I can put on the outer, outside uh, of the object, and I love uh, science fiction and uh, space stuff and planets, and so I started to think, okay, I can uh, put maybe stuff like uh, texture of uh, 
Mars, Moon, uh, Jupiter, and whatever. And this is the final output. Um, this object is produced only with the 3D printer process in uh, FTM and uh, with a, that's a, a small detail. In the slicer, I use a fuzzy skin uh, function that goes, uh, that gives to the, out, uh, the outer <coughs> out skin a sort of roughness. So, but I, I wanted to get more out of this object, so I started to think about, okay, I can make uh, some bottles, I can make uh, jewelry, I can make uh, oil bottles, I can make uh, uh, perfume bottles, and so on. And at the end, I, I, because I was thinking in, uh, in small scale, what about the change of scale? Think something a little bigger. So I had, okay, I would like to have a Caccio Cavallo chair in my living room. <laughs> <coughs> so. Uh, this is, um, of course, not, um, uh, th it's not, nothing to do with the digital fabrication, but um, it's a classical process of um, making and producing objects. Uh, so I have the basic geometry already. I just had to put some seamed cut on the geometry and open it into the UV uh, map editor. I at this time, you can see in the middle up in the UV, uh, UV map editor a square shape because when you when you do this you don't know the scale of the object you cannot master it so I had to I needed a geometry with a known uh, dimension that I could use as a scale reference in a CAD file so um, that's uh, more colorful but it's almost the same the the blue one is the 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 reference shape. And at the end, I exported it and prepared it in a CAD file for the, for the CNC machine in, a, in, a fabric, um, uh, in the fabric industry. And this is another one. I had to make many different kinds of uh, templates. And this is, uh, those are a couple of screenshots about the first uh, prototyping process. <coughs> I'm not really happy with the final output. We have to make some changes, but we will get it. <laughs> so, uh, since this uh, function of opening a 2D geometry on a UV map editor, it's uh, has this little problem that I have to scale or to, to have some reference. I was thinking, okay, Blender can do more. I'm not able to program in any language, but I got to know in the Blender uh, world community, Fabrizio, that is going to talk after me, and um, we were just talking about this project, and I asked him if he could uh, develop an add-on just to open already in scale the geometry, with maybe a control of the offset of the outer uh, contour, and maybe taking also in charge in, in, in uh, other considering the, the tension of the of the, the the fabric, whatever. And he did it. It's not, not yet at the final stage, uh, let's say in a pre-alpha, but it's a very, very nice one. So now, I, I, I can get rid of the Caccio Cavallo, so I was thinking, okay, I would like to have make another cha uh, scale change. What about this? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Fabrizio is taking my place and yeah. is going to tell about the spin-off project. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Arcangelo. This is the conjunction point between me and him because we have really worked together on this file. And, uh, you know, so who I am? first of all. So my name is Fabrizio Lorito. I'm Italian as well. I'm an electronics engineer by education. I am a marketing manager by profession. And I am an artist and 3D artist by passion. How all these three things fit together, well, this is the challenge of my life. But you know, putting together things uh, very diverse and sometimes uh, gives space to creativity. So when I got to know Arcangelo and he described to me uh, his research, I started to think, okay, he started from food, then he derived from food abstract shapes, and those abstract shapes 
turn into design objects from jewels to houses. Now, can we do something else with those abstract shapes? Because I was struck as well on how beautiful can be shapes uh, from food uh, if you put them in an abstract environment. And OK, I will show you uh, what I've done. Uh, I think you've put the wrong slide, but that's, it. that's <laughs> fine. OK, so this, this is the first one. <laughs> this is the first one, so I put some iron in it. In it. And uh, yeah, I mean, we just, uh, it was just fun uh, between me and Arcangelo to think of uh, how nice would it be to see this Cavalli flying in the air in the, in the Magritte style. Next. OK, next I move to Asher. So uh, these, are starting, uh, <laughs> these are starting too fast. Uh, OK, Asher. And here, here we have uh, then another one. Now, there were a couple of technical challenges in it. The first was that uh, I wanted to spread these spheres uh, into the space with geometry nodes and still avoiding that they collide with the shapes. And then I used uh, geometry nodes for animating them. And OK, this was relatively easy. A little bit more challenging was to create this feeling of pencil drawing on, a, on, on rough paper. And to do this, I had to develop an, uh, a, procedural, uh, a procedural texture. This is a kind of tune shader. But with very few notes, I think I got an interesting, uh, an interesting graphical result. So like with, Ar like with Arcangelo's research, uh, Blender is always part of the creative process. Because when I see something, then, uh, then I started to think, OK, is this something where Blender could add something to the, to the final work? And uh, so it's really a dialogue. You are, get some inspiration, then you look at the tool, and the final result uh, is always surprising in a way. Oh, this was a challenge. This was a challenge. Unfortunately, I don't know how to stop this thing. Uh, this shouldn't start automatically, but uh, I think you all know this. Uh, I don't know if I can go back just to show again. OK, I show it to show again this. OK, this is a very, this is a very well known uh, drawing from Escher. You know, this was a challenge because how can you imagine to realize in, with, with a tool that represents real geometry, an object that is impossible, a, a stair where you are continuously climbing up or continuously climbing down, always coming back to the same point. I mean, when you draw on paper, you can do, but with a 3D tool, how can you do this? Now, of course, now I hope this works again. Yeah, of course, uh, all the irony remains. So all these Cacciocavalli that are jumping up and down on the stairs, they are remaining. And you see, I, I managed to get a convincing, uh, a convincing effect. Now, how did I do? Well, uh, basically, does it start now? Yeah, now it starts. The point is that this stair looks like a continuous object only from one specific point of view. If you change point of view, then uh, everything is different. And then you can see that some of these Cacciocavalli are jumping into the air or from the air to the, to the, mm, to, to the stairs. So it was challenging. Uh, from the concept to the realization. When I started to render this, I also realized that I had another challenge, that shadows were not convincing, because objects that are next to each other in this illusion, they are quite far away from, from, from one another. And so I had to use uh, a visual effects technique, so the, the shadow casters that were placed in the right place so that shadows as a whole are convincing. So, it's, uh, it's always, uh, there is always a technical challenge behind this, uh, these objects. OK, now, if this goes and if I can stop it, OK. So this was, this was then, uh, this is the final piece I'm going to show you. This was a big challenge, so now why this painting? First of all, because Piero della Francesca is a very famous Italian painter from in it Italian Renaissance, the golden age of Italian art and culture. I love him a lot. 
Second, because I want to remind everybody that uh, Piero della Francesca was one of those artists, together with some before him, honestly, that has invented geometric perspective. So they are those who have first studied how can you represent a geometry, a 3D geometry on a 2D screen. And without the study of people like this, uh, today we wouldn't have Blender. We wouldn't have the possibility of representing on a 2D screen uh, 3D objects. So thanks to this guy and uh, geometry in this painting is quite important. This is not just the background. The geometry is part of the painting. Uh, this, uh, all this church represents, uh, gives the message of the perception of perfection and harmony of universe. Uh, and uh, it's full of symbols. Those, that shell over there with this oyster egg that is pending there, they are symbols of, of maternity, of fertility, of per perfection again. So geometry is an important part of the painting. And uh, just the next thing before showing how this results into a Cacciocavallo magic <laughs> transformation, all these guys over there, who, who are they? Well, basically, you can recognize them, not from their face, because nobody knows what was the face of St. John the Baptist, but from the symbols they are holding or wearing. So this shepherd's stick, this is and, uh, on the left, uh, represents uh, St. John the Baptist, or uh, uh, this stone that was, uh, that was used to hit the breast of the second character tells us that this is St. Jerome. Uh, those guys in the background that are also staying on a higher level, uh, they have jewels on the forehand and on the necklace, so these are angels. And on the right, among other people, you can see San Francesco, St. Francis, from the stigma that is wounds that he has on the breast. So at the end of the day, if you, uh, rep if you replace all these guys with Caccio Cavalli, there is the same irony as all the other pieces, but at the end of the day, you recognize exactly those people. You recognize exactly those people. A lot of fun to do this. Technically very challenging because the geometry is complex and the shaders and the, all the textures are, you, you know, from, from a very famous artist <laughs> in the Renaissance. But uh, I was quite happy about, uh, about that. Uh, just a technical note, to, to reproduce the geometry, uh, I had to use, I, I used FSpy. But it was not straightforward because uh, with, with FSpy, usually you have to input the, the focal lens. And without the focal lens, uh, everything can be stretched in the, in the depth direction, either very narrow or very, or very deep. So since uh, I had the reference of those squares on the roof, on the, on the, on the vault, then I used this to play with the, with the focal lens until I got the right proportions, and then uh, all the geometry came out of it. OK, this was, the last, uh, this was the last that I wanted to show. If you want to see more, just follow us, and uh, there will be other coming, because this is, a, this is a project that just triggers a lot of ideas. Uh, I want to close with, uh, with this clip, just to remind everybody that whatever we see on this screen, at the end of the day, they are just numbers flowing on a screen. And uh, you can recognize them only because they've been turned uh, into pixels, but at the end of the day, we are only seeing always numbers flowing on a screen. And that's it. Thank you very much. It's coming. Thank you. Ce l'abbiamo fatta. Grandi.